Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, would you state your name and your address for which you do the living? Yes, sir. My name is James C. Dallarosa. I live at 806 Waterhouse Court, Portland, Florida. I'm an auctioneer. Uh, Mr. De La Rosa, in uh, late 89 or early 90, did you come in contact with the defendant out in Warren, Mississippi? I believe that to be her, sir. Yes. All right, sir. Uh, could you tell the jury, please, how you came in contact with her? I uh, was in the Holly Hill area, Derbyshire, 11th Street, and I was headed west to Highway 92. There was a lady standing alongside the road. Uh, this was early, in, well, I'll say about mid-morning on a weekday, and there was a lady standing alongside the road uh, indicating that she needed a ride going that way. I don't recall if she had her hand out hitching a ride or if she was just standing there. I don't recall the particular details about that. Uh, she got in the I stopped. She got in the vehicle. Does this appear to be that lady? Yes, sir, it does. We uh, traveled a very short distance. She asked me what I was doing. I told her I was out running errands. And she told me she was a professional prostitute. And she wanted to get to the interstate to hitchhike a ride to Orlando and back. And she was curious how this was going to get her to this particular road, which is 11th Street, as I said before, from Derbyshire to Highway 92. Live in this area, knowing that that was close to Interstate 4, I told her this would get her there, no problem. And she was very curious about it. I said, well, this will get you down to the intersection, down to the Highway 92 and 11th Street, and I'll let you out there. And the interstate is just a short piece from there. And she says, fine. During the course of the drive, uh, she made mention of having a home in this area. I think I mentioned before, a $125,000 home. Uh, and I asked her what area. She declined to say. And I was rather concerned at this time if she had a home in this area, but she didn't know how this road was going to get her from point A to point B. I didn't feel that everything was as advertised. Uh, she showed me a picture of a couple children, and uh, I commented, it's nice looking children, or whatever I may have said about the children. She, she had a purse on the floor between her feet. And she put and she removed the pictures, showed them to me. She put them back and pulled out another uh, card holder and held it up and said, "This is some of my customers: uh, judges, attorneys, state's attorneys, police officers, and I forget else who she might have mentioned." And she told me her what her fees was. Uh, if you want me to go into that, I will. Yes, sir, and, and you may have to use the language that Ms. Warnock used to the best of your recollection, and uh, you're going to have to use it exactly as you heard. Well, so she, she didn't use any foul language with me. She just, all she said was that uh, her, her rates was $75 in the woods, $100 in a motel room. You've got to use a condom in a straight sex. I didn't comment. Uh, we wrote a little peace mother and she said I prefer to go to the woods uh, I, I said not to uh, offend her or make her mad I made a comment to the effect of uh, maybe some other time or later or rain check or something of this nature I felt very uncomfortable with the situation and she met, she commented it's now or never and uh, after I declined her offer her emotions she acted a lot different than she did earlier in the, the short ride across there. How did she change in her attitude towards you? Well, earlier she was kind of very open about things and talking very freely, and then after I declined, she didn't have too much to say. She was abruptly doing things in the seat of the car, reaching for her purse and, and back and forth in the seat and things of this nature. And. Uh, I just, I just felt uncomfortable with the situation. I felt that there was, I felt alone there was a problem when she didn't know how 11th Street was going to get her to Highway 92 to get to the interstate, but she had a home in this area. I, this was running through my mind all the time. So it was a short ride across there, approximately 10 to 15 minutes. I let her out at the corner of Highway 92 and 11th Street. I headed east towards Daytona. She headed west towards the interstate walking. When she exited the car, she, she 
slammed the door on the car. She didn't say thanks or anything for the right, and that's what happened. After you refused her offer for sex, uh, did she appear to be angry with you? Well, sir, she never really asked. She never really confronted me about sex. She told me what her price was. She never asked me if I wanted to go right out. She never came right out and asked me if I was, you know, if this was the situation or if this was what was going to happen. She made mention of the, her fees. And uh, what did you think she meant when she said now or never? Well, Objection, Your Honor. Well, I uh, would assume that was the school of the woods or wherever. And uh, along that route, before you get in the interstate, are there woody areas? Yes, sir. It's kind of a remote area from Derbyshire to Highway 92. May I have just a moment, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Your Honor, may I have this item marked for identification? Yes, yeah, so we broke the bed. Your Honor, initially we would take the position that if those three photos go in, the entire team should go in. With me, uh, you're not objecting to in there uh, going in. We are you're objecting right. to the entire thing going. We're more fundamentally objecting to it being split up. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's misleading to split it up, John. I, I agree with you. Uh, we'll this up for the record later. Thank you. When this person entered your vehicle, she told you she was a professional prostitute. Yes. Early on, correct? Right? Yes. The entirety of the ride lasted about 10 or 15 minutes. Right. During that time period, she seemed confused as to I-4, the, the roads, basically. She had some confusion. She, she seemed confused to how 11th Street was going to get her to 92, where she could get to the interstate. And you, in, you indicated that this person discussed fees with you. Pardon me? She discussed fees with you. Yes. She did not use she didn't, Excuse me. She didn't discuss fees. She told me what her fees was. It wasn't discussed. Okay. When she told you those things, she had already told you she was a professional prostitute. Yes. She, you indicated on direct examination, did not use foul language. She did not. Did you understand her to be propositioning you? When she told me what her fees was, I I really didn't, I knew what she was saying, but I didn't really think she was telling me this, that, that this is what was gonna, this is what was gonna happen now. Uh, as mentioned earlier, I would assume after she said it's now or never, it was, I, I would have guessed that was, she wanted me to go somewhere with her. So there was an offer thrown in the air, more or less. If that's what you wanna call it. She also indicated that she only did straight sex and with a condom. Yes. 
You also testified on direct examination that she showed you cards that she indicated were from customers. Business cards, yes. Business cards. Did you look at the cards? I did not. Okay. But you saw there was a folder with cards kind of thing. Right. I, if you want me to elaborate on that, when she held them up and they unfolded, the one at eye level caught my eye because it had an outline of a star on it. Okay. And she had mentioned police officers and deputies and that caught my eye. And she had mentioned that police officers and deputies were among her customers. Yes, sir. You also testified on direct examination that you said to her maybe some other time. Yes. Okay. Throughout this entire ride, you testified on direct examination, she never became angry. She became angry after I refused, after I was not receptive of her offer. I, okay. She, her, her demeanor changed tremendously. I thought you said on direct examination that she got quiet when you refused. She, she didn't talk. She was abruptly moving around inside the car, reaching for a purse back and forth. And I don't recall her really ever saying anything. It was just her actions and her movements that she did in the vehicle. She didn't yell at you. No, sir, she didn't. She, did, she didn't curse at you. No, sir, she didn't. She didn't use foul language with no. you. She didn't do any of those things. She did not. And the cards that you mentioned, she had pulled out of her purse as well, right? the, the folder thing. Yes. Right? And then you left her off, slammed the door, and she left. Yes. Nothing further on. This chair. <coughs> Uh, did she also show you pictures of two children that she said were hers? Right after she got in the car and she told me that she was a professional prostitute, uh, her car was broke, she needed some money, she showed me the picture of two children and said they were her children. A little boy and a little girl, approximately six to ten years of age, I would say the boy being older. And she said that she would prefer to have sex in the woods as opposed to in the uh, That's the answer. Mm -hmm. Objection. 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 Thank you, Your Honor. If it please the court for the record, this is the witness that was substituted for a family member by the joint stipulation. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, would you state your name, please, and your address? My name is Jean Emmis Berger. My address is 17887 Southeast Federal Highway to Cuesta, Florida. Where is that, uh, Ms. Emmis Berger? It is very close to Jupiter. It borders Jupiter, Florida. Approximately uh, one mile from the Palm Beach County line. All right. And uh, when did you uh, first learn that you might be a witness to this case? 9.30 last night. Uh, did you know uh, Peter Sounds? Yes, I did. I'd ask you to look at the photograph uh, 5X in and ask if you recognize the individual in that photograph. Note the previous objections, Your Honor, no further language. Yes, Peterson. I may be off this evidence instead, yes, sir. How long did you know Mr. Sims and in what capacity? I met the Sims in 1987. Objection to relevancy, Your Honor. I met the Sims in 1987 uh, in a building I had purchased in 1986. We had an antique store. They came in as a customer and developed a rapport with them uh, through church affiliation. Uh, did you have occasion to find out uh, in late May, early June of 1990 that he had a trip planned? Yes. Could you tell the uh, jury, please, uh, where you expected him to go as a result of that trip? My understanding of the trip was that he was to visit with the uh, missionary team, which we all supported. Uh, he was also to visit his son in Arkansas, and he was to be with his mother in New Jersey July 4th. Uh, 
to go north, uh, in fact, you just came north from that area. How close did you live, uh, Mr. Sims? Approximately three miles from his residence. Okay. Uh, to travel north uh, through Dayton Beach and on towards New Jersey, what route uh, would you take? What would be the most direct route? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Relevancy on the What Do you know what the most direct route would be? When I personally drive to New Jersey? No, that's what they're objecting to. Okay. You just need to specify what the most direct route would uh, be. I-95. Okay. Do you recognize Exhibit 60? Could you tell the jury, please, what that is? This was a new car that they had purchased after he had had his retirement. Okay. And they being whom? Peterson. Ursula did not drive. Was he living with his wife at the time? You know, know he was with Always. Him. With regard to uh, his uh, traveling the automobile, were there ever the occasions that he may carry large numbers of Bibles? Relevancy, Your Honor. Overruled. Yeah, there objection. Objection. I'm, the word. I'm just yeah. stating the grounds. Yeah. Just stating the grounds, Judge. Yes, objection. You, you can answer that, please. Yes. Okay. He did carry a lot of Bibles. Was that in his business or in his work? What, what was, why would that be? The Sims, upon his retirement, it was a desire of their hearts to serve the Lord in a missionary capacity. And the Bibles, whether they were individually handed out or donated by case lots to the Christ is the Answer team, uh, that is why he had the Bibles. Objection. No further relevancy here, Stanley. No further question, John. Thank you. Thank you for coming, man. No questions. Any key points or main key She made it to drive back, John. Thank you. Made it part, man. You're still out of the room. I didn't talk to you. I didn't talk to you.